Well, I think it's about time we uh, enabled Muharib to have his uh, finale and uh, finally find his mate. Uh, so, I've converted him to the D6 hack, which basically means um, you have your usual abilities here, but you assign the numbers 7, 8, 9, 10, 11 and 12 to whatever ones you want. And he's a warrior, so he gets his hit dice are D6 plus 2, and when he tries to damage, he does D6 plus 1 uh, with a weapon, and uh, D6 with an improvised weapon, or fists, whatever. Um, his armour, he starts with the... he's going to have the standard um, kit that a warrior has. So he's got leather armour and shield. These act like extra hit points on top of his normal hit points. Um, he starts with... For a warrior, he starts with the same number of hit points as he has constitution. So there, there he is, and when he, he levels up, he'll get d6 plus 2 extra. And he's got these abilities here, which is uh, kind of fun. Once a day, um, a warrior can regain d6 plus 1 lost hit points. The surge is instant and takes no time. Uh, shield block. Um, when he fails, when he gets hit, or uh, whatever, he... Um, <laughs> And he would take damage. He can choose to destroy his shield um, to, to absorb that damage, but then he's, he's lost his shield and he can't get it repaired or whatever. So uh, and that's even if his shield points are gone. So that's some nice abilities for him. So here it is. It is written by the same guy who wrote Golden Heroes all those years ago. And that is Simon Burley, inspired by the Black Hack. So uh, there you go, but it's all D6 based. So to give you an example, let's say our geezer here is trying to hit someone. What he has to do is a strength check and he's got to roll his strength or less on 3D6. He just misses. That's a shame. And when he is attacked, he... When he is attacked, he... In hand-to-hand -hand combat, he must roll his strength or less again to defend himself, and he misses by one yet again. But if he's um, being shot at with a bow or something, he must roll his dexterity or less. And he manages that to dodge out of the way of the arrow or whatever it was. Um, we have advantage and disadvantages in this game. So um, if he has advantage, he rolls his dice, gets rid of the highest, and see if he manages to equal or roll less than his stat. And if he has disadvantage, roll your dice, get rid of the lowest, and add those up. And that's pretty much how it works. Now, I still don't know how I feel about Fantasy Age, to be honest. Um, so I thought I'd try something a little bit different. And um, what we're going to do, we have a stack of these from the Dungeons & Dragons family adventure board game from 2003. So there's loads of monsters in here. I've taken out the big monsters and things like wraiths and that kind of stuff. So uh, we'll, we'll see what we get. And here are some traps as well. So what we're trying to do is make our way through this um, uh, network of tunnels beneath this wizard's um, house because we're trying to find this book. But Actually, we will find that um, it is this wizard who is responsible for kidnapping um, El Mukhtel, which is Maharib's mate. So, that's what we're going to do. So, we've entered this room. Now, um, let's say one to three, there's a creature. Four to six, there's a trap. There's a creature. What creature is it? Skellington. Hmm. So maybe we could have up to six skeletons. Uh, we have four. Okay, this will be our first fight because they're not going to be friendly. They are put here by the evil wizard to guard his uh, catacombs and his treasures and such. So uh, let's sort those guys out. Now, D6 Hack has um, a decent list of monsters here to give you examples, but um, all you really need are the hit dice and um, maybe you could come up with an ability that they might have. 
Uh, these are sort of relate to uh, your sort of D&D &D amounts of hit dice roughly because it's it's meant to be adaptable. You're supposed to be able to adapt D&D &D adventures to the six hat without much worry because of the way it works. So you're only really worried about hit dice. So I think skeletons are probably just going to have one hit die each. So uh, let's just uh, 5, 4, 4, 2. So. And I would imagine they would take half damage from edged weapons. So half damage from swords. There's a lot of them, so that's a worry. So when it comes to initiative, you test your dexterity to see if you succeed. And if you do, you go first. If you fail, your opponents go first. So our dexterity is 11 and we succeed. So we can go first. We have a lot of enemies to deal with. So uh, I think I'm going to leap over here. Um, yeah, we can try and go into here to uh, defend ourselves a little bit better maybe if we can get there but I think we can get here in the first round and we'll just go for this guy um, we'll make our strength check and that is just 12 so we do succeed and we roll d6 plus 1 so we get a 4 and we do him 2 damage because we're doing half damage and we smash that skeleton which is encouraging. Now, unfortunately, these uh, his his mates are going to have a go. So we will have to defend ourselves from this guy, trying to get a twelve or less, and we do. This guy's coming in, trying to get twelve or less to defend against him. Oh, we fail. Okay, that's not good. And I'm going to take the damage from uh, this chart here. Level one monster. Uh, d6 minus 1, or you can have fixed damage of 2, but um, we like dice, so uh, skeleton does d6 minus 1, which is a 3, ouch, that's not good, so we will take 3 points off our armour, and the final one comes in, he's going to come over here to give me a chance to do some <coughs> tactics, and um, we'll roll our strength or less, and we will, so we do defend ourselves. And um, now it is our turn, and we're going to back up to here and take a swipe at this guy. And we get less than 12, equal or less. So we hit and we do d6 plus 1. Wow, that's 6 damage. That skeleton is gone. Hang on, 6 damage, 3 damage. He's down to 1, isn't he? because we halve it. So this skeleton will move in. We will defend ourselves, 12 or less. Uh, 10, 11, we do. This guy moves in, 12 or less to defend ourselves. And the final one has his attack. And we defend that. So we shall lash out at this guy again, who we've been working on. We swing our sword and we miss, big time, as we slash for his leg, but uh, don't make contact. Um, we defend ourselves. No, we don't. Oh, yes, we do. 12 or less, that's fine. He swings for me with his sword. We defend ourselves and he also swings and it's a miss, or we parry him rather. So we're still trying to... Uh, Sitting here swinging dice. Okay, we'll try, try to smash him. Oh gosh, I rolled. <laughs> I rolled four dice. I distracted myself. Right. Five divided by two. That is enough to defeat that guy. We still have two skeletons coming at us. We parry against one. And we parry against the other. Yes, we do. Right. Um, these two are two of the tougher ones. Um, we'll try and smash this guy. That is just 
12. And as 6, that's 3 damage to him. He's down to 1. And the other guy attacks. We parry his blow. And we just parry the other guy's blow. Getting an 11, that's fine. And uh, we'll try to go for him again. Try and finish him off. That is just a 12. That is spot on. Uh, 4 divided by 2 is 2. He is destroyed. We've taken a bit of damage to our armour, but, you know, it's not too bad. And this guy attacks us again. But we get an 11, so that is 12 or less. We defend. Now we turn our attention to this final skeleton. Uh, 9, 10, 11. That's good. 6, 7 divided by 2. Let's call it 3. He's down to 2. And we defend against him. Yes, we do. And we try to finish him off if we can. That is good. Less than 12 or less. So our damage is 5 divided by 2. And he is smashed. Now I could rest for an hour and take that time to repair my armour. But um, I'm not going to. I'm going to search this room. Um, is there any cool stuff in here? Using my maths dice, which is plus and minuses. So the more pluses, it's a yes. The more minuses, it's a no. Is there any cool stuff? Um, I'll do an intelligence check first. Oh god, my <laughs> intelligence is seven. Uh, yeah, I'll, okay. Yeah, if there was anything, I am not able to find it. Yes, I shouldn't have done it that, like that, should I? Okay, we're going to move out of this room further into the complex. Now, if you're wondering where these floor plans are from, they're from Folklore the Affliction, which, true to form, I got secondhand. So, um, and although, you know, they're not, although they're not cardboard, they... They don't feel like uh, too, they're floppy, but they're not, they don't feel um, too fragile. So, and they look nice. So, we have entered this room. Um, let's have a think. Um, are we going to find more monsters? Are there creatures here to deal with? Yes, there are. Okay. Let's grab a card. We don't want another skeleton. Let's have a bit of variety. We didn't really want a bugbear, but <laughs> we've got one. So, hmm, it's going to be trouble. Now, bugbears are quite tough for this first level character I've got. So, I'm going to roll the d3, see how many we get. That's two. There we go. Unpainted, I'm afraid. But, um, right, we'll see how we go. Um, again, these are stationed here to keep people out, and so they're not going to be friendly, I would have thought. So I'm going to roll my dexterity or less. Uh, this is a 10, that is good. So I get to go first. Now I shall just, I'll just charge in, whaling away, and uh, check the bugbear rules and see if they've got any extra cool stuff they can do. Now they have three hit dice. All dex tests are rolled with disadvantage. So, um, so I rolled a 10. I rolled another die and get rid of the lowest. Oh, that's a one. So yeah, I roll my initiative with um, disadvantage because they are kind of sneaky. Okay, so three hit dice for each of them. That's going to be a worry. The first one's got uh, 10 hit points, ouch, and the other one has got 9, 10, 11. So if they have three hit dice, um, I'm not going to worry about that. Uh, D6 plus one damage for each of the wood bears. Well, I've rushed in and he's 
He's quite a big guy. I've created a bit of a choke point, as they say. So I'm going to try and whack him by doing a strength check with my broadsword. And I just miss. That's a shame. He tries to hit me and I try to parry the blow by rolling the 12 or less. And I do manage it. So um, this guy is making up here uh, on his way. And I roll to try and slash the thing again. Hacking at his left leg. And I do hit him. I roll a d6 plus one. That's a seven. That is quite a harsh cut to his left leg. Now he will try to retaliate. I roll a 12 or less and I manage it. So yes, we're going for another attack. But unfortunately, hang on, uh, 10, 11, 12, 13, we just missed as we swing our sword just over his head. He manages to duck somehow and he swings at me and luckily I parry the blow. Hmm. These guys are quite tough but I'm, I'm making headway. Um, I'll try to hit him again and I do. I hit, hit at his uh, left leg again and I roll seven damage. So he just collapses into the corner as, as his left leg gives way. Um, if you didn't see in the previous video, whatever it was, um, these weird dice here are my Moirai uh, role-playing random chaos generators, which I got in a crazy Kickstarter. So that's where my uh, D6 hit location thing is from. So I just killed him. He rushes up and he's out outraged. So I try and defend myself against his mighty charge, which is probably going to knock me back a little bit with the uh, sheer force of his ferocity. Uh, I just managed to uh, defend myself against his blow and I retaliate. And I hit him uh, on the left arm with my broadsword for three damage. This guy is pretty tough. Um, there we go, maths this early in the morning. So he, he staggers back a little bit. I hurt his off hand. And he tries to retaliate with his mighty mace, whatever it is. And I parry it. So I'm swinging for him again. And that is 9, 10, 11. That is good. I go for his left arm again. I really pick a spot, don't I? Two damage. That works him down to six. He swings for me, trying to hack my leg, and he does. He got us a, th a 13 or so. Uh, D6 plus one, four damage. Wow, my arm is gone. My shield is gone, and I lose uh, my HP is down to eight, my actual HP. So I swing for him again. I'm desperately to finish a film off. I make it. I roll my 12 or less. And seven damage. That is excellent. I wasn't that hopeful. So I hack him in his right leg and he collapses over there. So, um, yeah. Uh, I'm not, I'm not going to do an intelligence check because my intelligence is so bad. Is there any cool stuff to find? <clears throat> yes, there is. Um, what could it be? Could it be some healing herbs? Um, I don't know. Let's get with this oracle die. No, <laughs> no healing herbs. It's probably just gold then. So um, let's say 2d6 gold, um, seven gold pieces. Right. So we've dealt with that. We make our way through to the next room. Now, as I turned that particular tile over, I found this and I thought that's a good place for a massive confrontation with the big bad. So um, over here, um, tied up in some way or incapacitated is El Mactel, our mate. This is the evil wizard whose house this is, who um, has the stolen book and has also kidnapped El Mactel. He's using the stolen book to use to do uh, terrible 
summoning stuff. You know how evil wizards like to. So the wizard is here, but who else is here? Oh my goodness, a troll. Wow, okay, we'll deal with that. And perhaps he summons a troll out of this bizarre pit here. And uh, he comes all the way from the Legend of Dritzt. Now, um, trolls are pretty tough, as you might imagine. Now, uh, where are they? Can I even find a troll? Okay, now, um, let us grab an ogre. That'll do. Four hit dice, and it can rejuvenate. At the end of every, every round, it rejuvenates D3 health, let's say. That uh, sounds like quite a fun uh, little uh, special ability. So, we'll roll his um, hit dice. 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19. That is plenty, sir. And a four hit dice monster, if I check the chart, does d6 plus 2 damage. Um, I'm not doing the plus bits. Um, I'm just keeping life simple for myself. Um, so, d6 plus 2. And I'm on 8 hit points, which is a bit of a worry. I ain't gonna lie. Now, yeah. Okay. Um, the wizard is basically a... We'll deal with him later. We'll deal with the troll first. So, um, he's letting the troll do the work, and then he might get involved later. So, let's roll our decks or less to try and get the initiative. Um, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. We do not. The troll goes first. That is horrendous. So we're having to defend ourselves against this massive beast. So with a parry, we try to get a 12 or less. And we miss. He rolls d6 plus 2 damage. 3 damage to me. I'm down to 5 hit points. There are rules for what happens um, if you get knocked out. So we'll deal with those as and when. Now I'm going to try and retaliate after taking that mighty blow. It staggered me um, as he punched me in the, well, almost broke my right arm. I'm going to swing for him with my broadsword. That's a hit. I attack him in the stomach. I stab him right in the stomach. And I do two damage. Not great. And at the end of this round, he gets to rejuvenate one point. Regenerate, I should say. That's going to be a problem, isn't it? That's a nasty ability to have. Oops. So he tries to attack me again. Uh, 9, 10, 11. I successfully parry him and try to swing at him with my broadsword. Um, that is just 12, so I do hit in his right leg. Hacking him for four damage. So he goes down to 14. He regenerates two damage. So he's up to 16 again. He swings for me with his mighty fists, um, but I managed to um, block him. And um, I'm going to swing at him. And I hit. That's uh, 10. I get his left arm for five damage. He's down to 11, but at the end of this round, he rejuvenates or regenerates one. So he's up to 12 again. He is a swine. So, oh gosh. Can I start trying to work my way towards him? Um, perhaps I could leap up onto this uh, coffin here and. Um, try to get some height. So, uh, tell you what, if I roll a, a dex to uh, leap up here successfully, 9, 10, 11 just, I will give myself, just for this round, um, advantage to hit because I've, I've leapt up and I've startled him. I'm sort of uh, attacking from a higher point. So, just for this round, I'll have advantage on this attack. So, I get rid of the highest die. That's 8, 9, 10. And I do hit him. in the um, left arm. I may have got the combat order mixed up there, but three points of damage. He is down to nine. 
and he regenerates one. So he's back up to ten. I will not get advantage this round. Um, he, I try to um, dodge him. I fail. He rolls d6 plus two. Oh, he knocks me out. Um, now I'm going to. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to block all of that damage by using my shield block. So my shield is destroyed. I still have five points, and I'm going to do adrenaline search, which gives me d6 plus one, seven. So seven, um, seven and five. That's up to. Um, I'm back up to maximum. Whew. Okay, it's not over yet. So um, let's. Uh, <laughs> gosh, right. I got a little confused there. So I'm going to say that um, I'm going to retaliate now. Uh, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Okay, I do hit him. That's three damage to his um, arm. So he's down to seven. He will try to regenerate. And he goes up to eight. Um, he will swing for me again on my ridiculous perch. Uh, and I parry him and retaliate and hit with a two in his left arm. So he's down to six. He regenerates two, so he's back up to eight, and that's all worry. I'm going to try and make my way over to the wizard. Um, this won't give me any advantage particularly, so I will um, try and parry him. And I just, just manage it, just get 12, and I try to hit him with my broadsword, and I do. That's five damage in his left leg. So he's down to three and hobbling a bit, but can he regenerate anything? He regenerates one, he's up to four. I'm wearing him down. So I'm sort of backing away and getting closer to the wizard. Now he will swing for me again. I fail to parry. D6 plus two, that's five damage to me. And down to four. Gosh, I need to finish him off. Um, I roll and hit. So he takes six damage in his left leg. He's down to minus two. But does he regenerate any? No, only one. Not enough. The troll is defeated. So, wizard, what have you got to say for yourself? So, he's going to cast a spell on me, whole person, and I'm going to try and make a wisdom save. I need to roll an eight or less. Just eight. Just eight. I shake it off and I go for him. Uh, I just missed, but he's in melee now. And um, that's going to make casting spells very difficult for him. So I parry his blow with his staff. I try to take him down. And he's not stupid enough to um, argue with my broadsword. Or should I say broadsword? So I release El Mechtel, my mate, and we uh, discuss what to do with this uh, character. Now, how is his demeanour? I mean, happy won't mean happy, but um, are we going to be pre predisposed to be merciful due, uh, judging by his reaction? He's not giving anything away. I think we are going to... Hmm. The, um, this place, this town, is a um, theocracy and the uh, uh, dominating um, god, as it were, is um, a very just and merciful one. So we are going to take this evil wizard and uh, to the authorities, uh, where he will be um, no doubt imprisoned and uh, 
try to uh, they, they will probably try to get him out of his evil ways but um yeah we can't just we can't just uh, dispatch him and <laughs> we can't just let him go um he's he's clearly been doing terrible things summoning horrible monsters and uh, that's not uh, the kind of thing that the theocracy would would want to happen in this kind of town so um yes we've found our mate we've found the uh, the book that the evil wizard has stolen from the uh, book guy uh, we will go back to the book guy taking the book and he will give us the um the book that we wanted to give to the guy from the merchant family so clearly uh, the merchant family is somehow involved with this wizard but perhaps they uh, were unaware of his nefarious deeds perhaps they thought he was all right so that's what we're going to do so going back to our previous episodes we uh, rescue the book which the thief stole for the evil wizard who was in the employ of this uh, merchant family who were unaware of his nefariousness we take the book back to the bookseller who gives us in return the book that this guy is after and uh, we take the book to him he is a, uh, a member of the merchant family and they all lived ever after thank you for watching i hope the uh, d6 hack was uh, yeah i quite enjoyed it. it's quite nice and simple lots of d6s flying everywhere and um yeah F fancy age just felt like a a little bit of a faff uh, compared to this so um there we go mm -hmm.